Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This time we will be reviewing top five tools for various genomic analysis. These lists are based on a rather interesting paper by Balaghe de Bon et al, published in Briefings in Bioinformatics. It is a relatively recent paper and also open access, so you can read it in detail yourself. The paper is titled Fully Exploiting SNP Arrays, a Systematic Review on the Tools to Extract Underlying Genomic Structure. I put the link to this paper in the description below. The paper contains quite a lot of interesting stuff, also detailed descriptions of unconventional genomic architectures, but in this video we will be focusing only on the tables that they are giving for the top tools in various categories. These rankings are based on numbers of citations in PubMed between January 2020 and September 2021. There is also a fairly lot of other comments to these software and software tools, so I really recommend to read the full paper if you're interested. A short comment from my side, I don't know if we can draw an equation between the most cited equals the best in terms of software or software quality, from my perspective, I would rather not do this. But of course, the numbers of citation indicate certain popularity, whatever that means. And at the end, it's good to be familiar at least with the information, which software is the most popular for a certain approach. Of course, this also can widely differ between the fields. This paper seems to be focusing on human genetics, but of course, if you approach things from the livestock perspective, from the plant science perspective, or for example, for wildlife genetics, then this ranking might be entirely different. So in no way we are talking about absolute and unchangeable lists here. So the first category they analyze is population structure and ancestry. And basically how it is done is given in these tables and all the time we have the same header information. So there is a tool, the type, availability, which is always free, which is excellent. Also some kind of a description on input data, algorithm, characteristics, year of publication and reference. Of course, these full references then can be found in the paper itself. I will not go through each and every detail for each software tool. So you can either stop the video at the appropriate time if you want to review a table or just check out the source publication. Just a general comment on the column year here. So you will see a similar pattern across these tables. So you see that the software that is very often used or being most popular in this time frame, which was analyzed, it's not necessarily the newest one. It is mostly from the last 10 years, but there could be occasionally also older ones as well as also demonstrated in this table already. So the population structure and ancestry, the first one is a structure, which we also checked out in one of the videos on this channel. Then Eigensoft, Admix tools, fast structure and fine structure, which are being listed as very popular when it comes to population structure analysis. Also, you see that some of them are desktop applications and R packages dealing with a number of input data possibilities. My personal favorites are always those which are using Plink inputs because then it's very, very easy to prepare data for them, which is of course great because the data preparation is one of the most time consuming elements of the analysis itself. Next, we have the top five tools in terms of citations for identity by descent calculations. Here, the top of the list is the refined IBD, followed by germline, fast IBD, hub IBD, and array PID. All of these tools are command line based and free to use. So you see that there is a variability in the input data and also the algorithm they are using. I would perhaps mention the first one, so the refined IBD, it does not allow genotype errors, so it should be used together with that imputation process. But actually, the authors of refined IBD 
are the same ones who made actually the Beagle software for which is used of course for imputation. So basically you can very well combine the Beagle for imputation followed up by the refined IBD for calculation of identity by descent. Next up, there are the top tools for calculation of heritability. Now I have here multiple comments. One thing is here is not the top five tools because actually it's just four of them. And the other point I want to raise here that uh, while well, the tools or software for calculating heritability for various uh, traits and occasions could vary very much depending on the field you come from. So personally, coming from the livestock genomics field, I take these tables for information for human genetics, but certainly depending on the analysis that is being done, there are certainly more tools available. But to stick to this table, so the first place is the LD score, then LDAK, a tool called HERA, and RHEMC. Also, you see variability here in terms of software types. So there are command lines mostly, but there is also HERA for R variability in terms of input data and also the algorithm that is being used. We go further for the top five tools for polygenic risk scores, where the top of the list is PR size, which I don't know if it's intentional, but is a very nice similarity to the word precise. But anyway, it is followed by PRSCS, then SBLAP or BLAP from GCTA, followed by SBSR from GCTB, and the R package, Lassasum. Many of these tools take Plink as the input data, which I always love to see. Next up are the top five tools to compute linkage disequilibrium. This is a topic that is often discussed on this channel and actually one of the most popular topics around here. So we use the varld package to compare LD structures of uh, two populations, but as you see, it's not on the top of the list for this publication. On top of the list is actually Haploview, followed by a software Big LD, Alohomora, VarLD, and LD Explorer. On a personal note, I would be really interested about the background of the naming of the Alohomora software and if it has to do anything with the Harry Potter universe because this word is actually a valid spell name there. And it is used to unlock doors and various other sealed off locations to uncover their secrets. Next up, there are the top tools to study inversions. The top of the list is the software Invclust, which is an R package. And actually all of these are R packages, which make them very convenient to use and on top of that, the Invclust and also other R packages in this category use Plink as the input file format, which is always good. The other tools on this list are pfido or fido, followed by a very clever word play on the word inversion, when it's basically the software name is just that, but with a capital R indicating that it's an R package. So inversion, then score invhep and recomp cluster. Next up are the top five tools to another fairly popular topic, which is the analysis of copy number variations. Here, the top of the list is the well-known PenCNV software, followed by Quanti SNP, BirdSuite, SIMKit, and the software called GLAD. Here we have different types of software, mostly command line, but very different in terms of software background. And there is also an R package on the fifth place. As always, they are all free. So you are free to explore, check out maybe all of them and see which one works the best for you. Also, there is a great variability in terms of input data and algorithm they are using while actually the top three of them 
are using a variation of the hidden Markov model. And last but not least, there is a list for top five tools to study the mosaicism on the genome. You can find more information and including very nice figures for the mosaicism and its explanation in the paper itself. As for the tools, we have Gistic, Moha, Picnic, BAF Segmentation, and Hub LOH. Again, these are command line tools with various possibilities for input data and the algorithm they are using. But again, somehow gravitating towards hidden Markov models. So this is the end for today. I really invite you to check out the paper itself where you can find much more information, including very neat figures and explanation for some of these concepts. From my side, I thank you for your time and have a very nice day.